As a software developer, you've probably created a flowchart or two, a site map, maybe a class diagram like UML, or maybe some sort of sequence diagram, or maybe even a Gantt chart. Now, if you have, you've probably heard of MermaidJS. Well, I'm here to tell you that they have a visual counterpart called Mermaid Chart, which allows you to create complex diagrams for Markdown style code and collaborate with team members in real time. And in addition to those three diagrams and charts, you're also able to create a requirements diagram, a mind map, a pie chart, which you can actually see a little bit better in light mode here, a Sankey diagram, and anything else you see here. And in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to create these. Now on the dashboard, you have a couple different options. You can either create a new diagram or new AI diagram. And I'm gonna start off with the AI diagram because I'm lazy and it's actually one of the really good uses of AI, unlike how it codes. So let's say I wanted to create a class diagram diagram of an object oriented system. I could ask the AI to do that and it'll go ahead and create it. So it looks like it is creating a simple system of a course. So you have the course, you have the teacher, you have the student, and you have the person with the relationship between classes as well as their attributes and methods. And now you can make any changes utilizing the AI, but what we're going to do is go over into the editor and you're able to make adjustments here just like you would with Mermaid.js with this markdown like code, which is mermaid diagram language. So for example, within course over here, you can see that you can add a student, remove a student, add an instructor, and remove an instructor, but very often times you see that code right here, you have a TA. So we could also add a TA and remove a TA. However, we don't have a TA. See, we have a student, we have a teacher. So what we would need to do is create another class just like student and teacher, but this time, it would be a TA, which TA, if you don't know, stands for teacher's assistant, which we'll actually write right here, teacher's assistant ID, who also has the list course, assign grade, teach course, which matches up with what the teacher can do. Let's just leave it at that. That's how you would adjust this. But as you can see, there are no relationships between the TA and anything else. However, we want that. So what we would do is come down. This will be TA taught by TA and you can see that it adds it right here in real time. But what we could do instead of that, yes, I'm going to go back to the AI, is mermaid AI right here, add a teacher's assistant that has same responsibilities as the teacher. And yes, I know I have a few misspellings in there, responsibilities, but it's close enough. And what it'll do is it'll recreate all of this this entire class diagram here, but adding a teacher's assistant. Hmm, and it does it a little bit different than how we did it. And it shows a sample diagram. And if we want to use it, we can hard it right here and it'll add, or we could copy the code and we could just paste it right there. So this did it way better than how I did it. <laughs> of course it does. So let me close this so we can see it a little bit better. And as you can see, Instead of just having another teacher as the teaching assistant, we have it assisting in the course, and then they have the ID, but we can also inherit information from the teacher. We also inherit information from the student, as you can see right here, which is what this code is doing. It is creating the arrows pointing to the teaching assistant. And as you can see, Mermaid AI is not the only thing on the menu. You're also able to have notes within, so you can type whatever you want and you're good to go. You have a timeline that you could effectively set up as a version control system. Then you have various themes. See, this one is more of a light theme. And then you can have a forest theme, default theme, as well as the dark theme. And of course, you can export this diagram as a PNG, as an SVG, or the text as mermaid diagram, which it would be exporting this bit of text code right here. So if I wanted to make a flow chart or a site map of the crappy website that I'm making, intentionally crappy by the way, for the next video, I can do that, export that MMD, and then throw it into my GitHub readme to give people an understanding of what the flow of this website is because it's there's some hidden Easter eggs and things of that nature in it. So the flow chart helps me build it as well as helps others use it and kind of give them an understanding of what to expect. But you also have templates. So you don't have to go to AI, you don't have to write everything from scratch. You can actually use the pre-built templates for a flow chart or a requirements diagram or 
let's say a git graph as you can see here this is actually very pretty huh i should probably use this in some of my other videos to explain git anyway i'm going to undo this and actually go back into the dashboard so we can create one of these from scratch. So you can go to new diagram, which as you can see loads with a pre-built template that contains links to a starter guide for mermaid chart video, a video on how to make a flow chart. And this is a more manual approach than what I'm going through right now. And then various other extensions to that uh, flow chart. But we can come over to templates. We can go to a different type of flow chart and if I want to do flowchart with an icon, we can replace what we currently have and do just that. I'm going to collapse the menu. Actually, I'm going to close that as well. And with flowcharts and some of the others, you can actually come right into the visual editor and change the text as such. But as you can see, it disappeared. What you actually have to do is hit enter and then it'll save. Otherwise, if you were to come in here and type whatever and click out of it, it will not save into your text. And with flowcharts, you're able to add a node right here. And you can tie it in with whatever you want. And then we can create a new node directly from here by creating a line into nothing, untitled node, option sub three, and enter. And that's effectively how you can go about editing the flowchart with the visual editor, adding nodes up here, adding subgraphs over here. Cheat sheet is right here for anything else that you need. And I mean, that's really it. Everything else is typical mermaid JS stuff on this side of things, where if you need to delete anything, we can delete what we had just changed. If you want to remove the car icon or add an, a car icon, you can do all of that with the code right here. And you can change the shape as you wish, utilizing the visual editor and exactly how it looks by clicking on it and changing it as you see fit. And maybe I should have led with this, but there is a plugin for VS Code so you can do everything right in your editor. Or if you use any JetBrains IDE, well, same thing. And while I may be biased because I've been using Mermaid.js for years now, as well as I have partnered with Mermaid Chart on this, which by the way, the creator of Mermaid.js is the founder of Mermaid Chart, so it's not like somebody else doing it, it's the actual founder. And then any proceeds from this, which they've raised a good amount in funding because it's an amazing tool, will actually go back to improving mermaid js and which is completely open source and yes i'm biased but this is the best way to go about creating flow charts diagrams anything that you saw there including the pie charts which are very cool and the git graph i really need to use that more but, but anyway i hope this video was useful in teaching you how to create flow charts and various diagrams using mermaid chart who by the way have a special launch on july 24th on product hunt so make sure you check them out over there that's all i have to say i'll see you in the next one